So I find it interesting in our business that most clients don't intimately know what we're about, why we do this. And, and so I'm going to share with you a very important conversation today that's going to really illuminate what JCN is really about. We're really not about your investments, your taxes, your insurance, and those things. We started this business 20 years ago, my wife and I, to enable people to have a life that otherwise wouldn't have. Now that sounds like a whole lot because it is. I put a lot of effort every year, every meeting, to try to help you do that. And part of that starts with many things that Joe came to me already doing. So we're going to sit and visit with Joe Cagnolotti and have him share some of his experience. And I hope from this you'll gain this insight that will give you an edge up. Joe, Thank you, John, appreciate you out today, man. You bet, man. Glad so, to do it. Hey, how many years ago was it we met, you think? I, I'm thinking it was way back before 2010. It was way back then. Yeah, it was before this office for sure. I, if I'm correct, I believe it like 16 years ago. Yeah, it was a while. It was a while. Yeah, it was a while. It was really right after I retired. When was that? In 2005. And we met through one of your friends, right? Yeah, uh, uh, who's another one of your clients, I think. Yeah, hunting buddy of yours. Yeah, we hunted together for years and years and years. <laughs> and talk, tell, uh, you told me an interesting story about your, your hunting camp recently. Why did you have to move? Why did you decide to move? Well, you know, it's all about habitat. Animals need habitat to survive and to, to reproduce and flourish. And uh, this particular tract of land that we had leased from a timber company, and they'll remain anonymous, was uh, managed for their timber practices. I mean, for, you know, they were in business to make money. It doesn't make any sense not to. Well, lo and behold, I guess a big demand came up for telephone poles or pilings, whatever you use, you know, the, the size of pine trees that we had on this place for, and uh, they came in and cut all the timber. Well, wow. and uh, it's hard for a deer or a turkey to make a living off of pine needles <laughs> and briars. So, uh, you know, it, it just became not a very nice place to hunt in terms of aesthetics and, and the habitat. So I, I went on to better ground. Well, I'll tell you that when I asked you this interview, I remember our first meeting. And uh, what I remembered was something you do and we're doing that is the core element of our practice here that I think is fundamental for the retirement you've had. And we sat down in my office and talked, and you shared it with me. And the thing you surprised me as you sit down, you knew you had a plan in place before you ever met me. You had a plan. Talk about that. Well, I'll share an old adage with you that I, I truly believe in. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. And uh, planning is a cornerstone, I guess, of, of uh, the process uh, for me. I wanted to retire and not have to change my lifestyle at all. I wanted the same level of income that I had as I was working. And, uh, you know, so saving was very, very important, very high on my list. And uh, from there, it became a matter of uh, investing. And uh, when, when I did retire and took my IRA money, then obviously I needed to find uh, a money manager, somebody to uh, help me uh, manage the funds. And uh, I talked to this friend of mine, Charles Ray, and, and he highly recommended you, and I thought enough of Charles Ray to give you a shot. It didn't take me long to figure out that you knew what you were doing, and, and uh, so that's how we got together. That's how I began my business. And over these last 17 years, would you describe your retirement to be what you'd envisioned? Well, my, my goal in retirement was, as I mentioned, was not to have to go through a reduction in monthly income. And, and at the same time, I wanted to uh, leave a, a nice nest egg for my three children, uh, for the survivors. The way things are pointed right now, it looks like that's going to happen. Uh, the other big part of this is uh, I'm from a big family. I have uh, eight siblings. Wow, that's and, a huge family. And uh, so family matters. And uh, without getting into a whole lot of detail, you know, a significant amount of uh, resource and time was devoted by me and five other of my siblings to take care of our twin sisters. And uh, they needed the help. We were in a position to be able to help, so that was a part of my retirement plan, to be able to put myself in a position to help. 
and uh, that has happened. Uh, the, the other part is the fun part, as I call it, you know, hobbies and, and what do you do in your pastime? I love to fish, I love to hunt, my wife and I love to travel. Uh, so uh, we bought a fifth wheel camper uh, when I retired. In fact, she came to Louisiana and, and made a special order for that unit before the retirement date so that when we retired, it was in our possession. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been to, I'm going to say, around 40 of the states. We haven't been in the far northwest or the far northeast. We've been everywhere else and thoroughly enjoyed all those times and all those trips. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm in a hunting club, and the, 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 socializing, the socializing uh, and the pursuit of, of game is, is, a, is uh, what it's about. But what I really enjoy is getting out there and watching the sun come up every day. <laughs> really? And watching the sun go down and light. The really? It's just, uh, it's, a, it's a solitude like none other. Uh, and I love it. Uh, and the same thing with fishing. I like watching that sun come up and, and uh, I like watching the sun go down. So uh, hunting and fishing, uh, that's me. I'll tell you what, you're doing it the right way. I ask you a tough question here. Okay. All the years you retired, and I want our audience to really hear Joe's answer. I'm not, I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I think I do. Because some of you won't have the same answer, Joe. But all the, all the years since you retired, how many minutes have you worried about your money? Not too doggone many, John. <laughs> uh, I've been fortunate. Uh I haven't been in a position where I had I felt like I needed to worry about much, uh, but I have a theory about worry. Uh, if you're worrying all the time, uh, that means that there's something that you should take action on, but you're not doing it, or you can't do it. And uh, I think all worrying does is give you gray hairs or no hair, and and. Uh, Cause ulcers, you know. It's not going to achieve anything. Well, what you've Might done, well, but, but, but you've really done though what a lot of people have not done. I mean, you're not you're you're kind of downplaying this. But you're very proactive. You planned. I planned for you once you hired me. But before you ever hired me, you had a plan. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, that is as good as the best investment you can have. You, you just that was your big advantage, and that's why I believe you've worried none to little because you had a game plan in front of you and you followed. I started a long time ago keeping a chart uh, for my net present value of all of the money that I had in, invested in retirement uh, through my 401k at the, before I retired, and then, which later became my IRA after I retired, my pension funds, and any investment accounts that were paying back to me after I retired. and. Uh, I tracked that about, you know, every two or three months, I would tabulate uh, what my net present value was. What was my net worth? And uh, I didn't include assets. It was strictly the, the finances. Right. And uh, for a long time, uh, I wasn't taking enough money out for it to even go down. And uh, that was during some of the boom years financially. Uh, and I, I'm so grateful to you uh, for your sage advice that allowed that to happen. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to do it. Yeah. Uh, but again, so, Jim, that was part of your plan. You see, you, you, I, I didn't, it wasn't just me doing this. You, you, had, you, you were willing to act on your plan, and you had one. I did. And, and you know, that, that's part of my upbringing. Uh, my parents, uh, you know, they planned uh, for us as they were growing up and, and uh, set a good example, so to speak. Uh, another big piece of that was uh, my career. I was in uh, a management position uh, in the petrochemical industry. And uh, a lot of your uh, company's performance is based on your planning and how well you execute your plan. Uh, you have to estimate what your profits are going to be. You have to estimate what your costs are going to be. 
Uh, and if that's your plan or your budget, and if you beat your budget, Wall Street loves you. <laughs> You're a hero. But Lord help you if you don't. <laughs> it affects your paycheck too if you don't. It, it could go the other way, absolutely, positively. So planning was kind of ingrained in, in me at, as a way I did my career. Let me ask you a, a, a current question. Um, when you think of the stock market of the day, it, how much of a uh, stress is that on you today with, with the current condition of the market? Is that, how much does it bother you or does it bother you at all? Well, if I was inv invested in high-performing stocks and nothing else, I'd be a little concerned. But with the investment options that are out there and, and with the amount of surveillance that you and your financial experts uh, use to manage investment funds, uh, I'm not worried because if, if, if it means buying bonds or sitting in cash, uh, I'm content that the money is safe. Maybe that's not, not completely true in terms of safe because nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day or the next day. But there's some things you can't control. And if I can't control it or if my investor can't control it, I'm not going to worry about it. We're on the same page there. Now, you have three children? Three children. Three children. How are they doing? They're doing good. They're all adults. My youngest daughter, uh, she, she's been married now about, let's see, five years, six years, uh, and she has a four-year-old daughter. My two sons are, are on their own. My first son is a, a pipe fitter welder, and he works turnarounds when he feels like it. And it bothered me for a while that he chose... That instead of some steady career job, but it's his life. He's going to live it. I'm not going to live it for him. And he's happy. He's happy. I guess he's a chip off the old block in a lot of ways because he loves to hunt fish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my second son, he, he's a big duck hunter, and he got into preparing foods, cooking, specialty stuff. He's really into the Italian uh, meats right now. And uh, he makes enough money doing that uh, to support himself. And again, that's his choice. Uh, I'm not going to belittle him or, or uh, try to change his life because it's his life. He has to live it. But you've got a fine family. You came from a huge family. And how many years have you and Lynette been married? 53, coming up 54 in all. Okay, fantastic. Well, Joe, you were saying a little while ago, uh, I was telling you how much I, uh, frankly, I admire you. And then you came back and told me what? I said, uh the uh, CFO of our family is sitting right out in the lobby. That's my wife, Lynette. Uh, she manages uh, the books and the finances in terms of our personal accounts. Uh, and that includes, you know, making sure that there's enough money in the, in the account uh, to hand, handle the foreseeable cash flow requirements and uh, keep the bills paid so the credit rating doesn't go off the deep end. <laughs> And uh, we're a team. I mean, just like uh, your business with your family and, and your staff, it's a team. And uh, a lot to be said for team effort. Well, I do believe that. In my family, our CFO, our CEO is my wife. She you know, I don't pay any bills at home. She takes care of every bit of that. And so I can have an appreciation for what you're saying about Lynette. Well, thank God for those good ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I want to shake your hand on that one. That's that's a great. I that's just I just think you're a fine fine guy. I think you've um, uh, you shared some great wisdom and advice to, uh, to our viewers. And it's um, you are you are my ideal of what I want for every single client that I have. John, you know it's a two way street. Uh, I, I firmly believe that whomever you choose to uh, invest your money with, or, or have as a manager looking after where to put your money has to be somebody who's looking around the corners, who's turning over the leaf, and, and who's studying, and always uh, on a quest for more information and more knowledge, and that's you. Uh, there's one thing I'll guarantee you about John, he, he's, he's gonna scratch the surface, and he's gonna find out what's underneath. You know why that is? You already said it, but one of my big uh, edicts in life is the control you can't control. So it's it, whatever I do in life, whether it's managing people's money, whether it's building my house, I'm going to get down, I'm going to get as much knowledge as I could possibly get 
So th- th- I can say I've controlled all I can control. You and go. you are just, uh, you and Lynette and your family, uh, it's, um, you're really what I think our country is, is modeled after. I uh, thank you for driving down here to shoot this video so that all these people can watch it. My and pleasure. The one that I say, what do you have any other fun goals ahead of you that you got you hadn't done yet? Or what's what's on the horizon for you? What's the next well, fun thing? We would like to travel to all fifty of the states. We, we haven't done that yet, and I'll I'll be the first to admit that when that granddaughter came along, it kind of changed. Things. You told me that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's kind of the the uh, sun beam in our, in our life right now. Uh, but beyond that, uh, I don't really have any other goals in terms of hunting or fishing or, you know, it's just whatever comes naturally and whatever I get the chance to participate in and, and uh, to witness. Well, when I saw you last week, it, it, we talked with well, this week, I guess it was, and I was going to shoot the video this week. I knew what I wanted the topic to be on. I thought you would be the ideal person. You have a lot of clients that are in your spot, but I, don't, I just don't think it, it hurts to hear other people that do what we want to do and how to get there. And in these current times, there is a precipitous conversation about what the market's going to do. And I think if you spend a lot of time worrying about that, you're wasting your time. And you would be better served to go fishing, golfing, hunting, do something with your wife, your, your child, your grandchild. And I uh, hope you all gather a lot from this video. And Joe, thank you one last time. You bet, John. Take My care. Pleasure.